Hey, welcome to the live. Can you hear me okay? Can y'all hear me okay? I had to restart the live. Hi, Beverly. Thanks for stopping through the live. I had to restart it, so we'll get started in just a few minutes. Okay, Rob, how about now? Okay, perfect. Yeah, that was weird, but uh, TikTok did an update to the live. Hi, Autumn Bomb. Thank you for stopping through. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Had some technical difficulties. I did an update today, and um, for whatever reason, the live has not started. So I had to restart it now, but we're good. We're up and running. So tonight, we're going to talk about, we're going to do a quick recap of the last three episodes, and then we're going to jump into our favorite thing, which is fragrance layering and blending so we're going to go ahead and kick this off and get started welcome to everybody for coming to the bubbles and flames podcast this is season two episode number five and for those of you all that are watching the replays we appreciate you coming back as well so tonight what we're going to be talking about is uh, our favorite subject or subjects depending upon whether you are a candle maker a soap maker or if you like to make your own perfumes, or if you are a perfume addict and lover. I am all of the above except for soap makers. So shout out to everybody who stopped through and hanging out with me. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the last three episodes, what we talked about were the following. We talked about top notes, middle notes, and bottom notes, and what they are why they're important, and especially in the world of blending, right? So what we're going to talk about a little bit deeper tonight is we're going to talk about the beginning of fragrance layering and blending, all right? And then for the month of September, we're going to talk about different recipes, and we're going to be doing different recipes every week for the entire month of September. So hopefully you'll be able to come back and join us for that. All right, so the, the very first thing that I wanted to kick off is for those of us, whether we use fragrances on a personal note or whether we use them as professionals, there are certain things that we have to have and certain things that we have to do. All right, so we're going to recap those really quick and we're going to talk about some techniques and then we will get into actual blends and actual recipes. All right, and if you all could do me a favor and get the likes up for me and also share this live, get me out in the FYP, I would appreciate it. For those of you that are watching the replay, uh, definitely go ahead and you still can get the likes up. All right, so the past three episodes, we started with talking about our fragrance basics, where we talked about the fragrance wheel, we talked about fragrance notes and what they mean and how each one of those uh, items plays into fragrances because especially if you are a professional, these are things that you need to know. They're very important, especially if you are going to be a blender, whether you're blending for soap, candles, body oils, or if you're blending for your personal enjoyment, it doesn't matter. And welcome to everybody stopping through the live. So I'm going to give you some examples here after we go over our basics of some uh, perfume blends. Rob, you can jump in with the uh, cologne blends if you want. And throughout the episode, we are going to talk about um, fragrance blend recipes uh, later in the podcast. 
All right, so some of the essential tools and supplies that you'll need, uh, this really applies more so for my uh, professional people that are stopping through and watching the podcast. Um, and of course, I, I cheat and look at my notes. So uh, if I look away a lot, I apologize. But the necessary tools that you're going to need, of course, your fragrances, right? Whether it, um, and uh, Rob, I appreciate you for the chili pepper. So whether you are doing fragrance oils, if you are a body oil maker, you're going to need those carrier oils. If you are a soap or candle maker, of course, you're going to need uh, all of your essentials. And also, um, if you're on the fragrance side, you're going to need uh, pipettes and, of course, your blending strips. All right. Anytime you blend, those are some of the essentials. So, of course, you're going to need your fragrance oils. You're going to need your blending or blotter strips. And then, of course, you're going to need some pipettes. And you can get those off of Amazon or any fragrance supplier. Those are essentials no matter which side of the house that you're on. All right, let's talk about high quality ingredients and why they're important. Whether you are a professional or not, you always want to use the best quality ingredients. Why? Because it makes your fragrance smell better for one. Because you get what you pay for, right? If you use cheap things and that's what you're going to smell like and we don't want you walking around smelling like gasoline unless that's the fragrance that you're going for. So high quality ingredients. Now that we're going into fall, it's a good time of year to catch some of these sample sales. And uh, I'll talk about the infamous uh, sample hack, of course, when we get into talking about perfumes and colognes, you definitely want to make sure that you grab samples before you commit to buying a big bottle of whatever. It doesn't matter whether it's fragrance oil, cologne, or perfume. Definitely recommend you try out a tester if you're buying it in the store or if you're a maker, order some samples. And hello to everybody coming through live. I appreciate it. Safety precautions. A lot of us work out of our homes or our studios, but we still should definitely always be following our safety precautions. And really proper safety precautions when you are working with fragrances, you really should be using a mask. You should be using glasses or some type of protective eye gear and technically something that covers your clothes, but that's up to you. And then, of course, if you're making perfumes, don't forget uh, to clean all of your bottles out and your sprayers. If you are a fragrance or a candle maker, you want to clean out all of your utensils and, of course, make sure that you have something to mix the fragrance with. All right, blending. Let's talk about our blending techniques. So, of course, I'm going to go over yet again the notes. This doesn't matter which area of fragrance that you're in. You have top notes, and your top notes are what you smell initially. They're also what burns off first. Then you have your middle notes or your heart notes, which are kind of the, they hold the, your, your blend together. So if you have, and I use this example in one of the episodes, if your top note is peach, but your middle note is strawberry and your base or your bottom note is patchouli, initially you're going to smell the peach and then after about an hour or so it's going to burn off. Then you're going to smell your strawberry and that strawberry is going to combine with that patchouli. So initially you may smell all three, but when you get your dry down or your base note, that is going to be your patchouli, right? It's going to be more of a, a strawberry patchouli blend. Your peach is still going to be in there. It's just not going to be as prominent. All right. So that's your top, middle and bottom notes. All right. We had a whole episode where we talked about notes and thanks to everybody who's dropping the likes for me. Also, what about your fragrance wheel? If you don't know uh, what the fragrance wheel is, we had a full episode also on the fragrance wheel because it's very important if you are a blender or if you're thinking about getting into blending or layering because the fragrance wheel also talks about the fragrance families. So you have fragrance notes, you have the fragrance wheel, 
and you have the fragrance families and subfamilies. And I appreciate the gifts. I appreciate the rose. All right. So within the fragrance family, let's talk about those. We had our oriental family, and I'm just throwing them out, not in any particular order. We have our clean or our aquatic family. And within that family also, for the guys that are watching, you have your citrus that falls under there. You Clean is a very broad category, by the way. So with clean, you have your citrus, also your aquatic, your green fragrances, and your light, your lighter fragrances. So clean, most people like for work if you're uh, a lady with perfume because a lot of people don't like very strong beast mode scents. For me personally, I like beast mode scents, but that's just me. And that's why we're talking about and having this blend series. Because when you blend or layer your fragrances, you can make it as strong or as light as you want. A lot of the guys like to combine clean and woodsy, right? So we'll talk about that in a second. But also one of my mods, Court, she likes the floral category. Sorry, my eye is itching. She likes the floral family. So that's where your florals and your, your light fruits come in. Me personally, I like the gourmand or the oriental family. So thanks for thanks for the heart me. I appreciate it. With the gourmand, that is more of thanks, Rob. Oh, did it wrong. There you go. Thank you. That is more of your edible fragrances. Your caramels, your chocolates, your marshmallows. I love a good smelling edible fragrance. And I will talk about that more in a little while. All right. And then you have subfamilies under each one of those. But my other mod, Rob, he likes woodsy scents. What do I mean by that? If you're into Arabic fragrances, that's your ouds, your vetivers, your leathers, your wood, your heavier wood fragrances, your patchoulis, your sandalwoods, your cedar woods. Those all fall under woods. And then there's several categories that are up under the fragrance families which are on the fragrance wheel all right so we've talked about our basic fragrances so i would recommend if you don't know and it's really quick you can look it up what your notes are and how they factor in also your fragrance families and even take a look at your fragrance wheel it's it's very important in the world of blending all right so next Let's talk about how do we get these complex scents? If I want a clean smelling fragrance, whether it's a clean citrus, a clean floral, am I just going to use those two fragrance families? Am I uh, sorry, I said it backwards. Am I just going to use one fragrance family? Can I combine more than one fragrance family? And I just gave you the answer, which is yes. So if you're going to work and you want to do what they call a daytime fragrance, you can do a citrus, you can do a floral, or you can do an aquatic. All of those are in the clean family. However, the floral is in its own fragrance family. I would do a light floral. A lot of people tend to go with rose or they do a jasmine for work. But at nighttime, if you wanted to use your beast mode scents and your beast mode fragrances, then you could switch over into a different fragrance family. So you could still use your rose, but you would use a spicy rose. And spicy rose, for example, is considered two different scent families because you have the floral scent family for the rose. And then you have your gourmand or your oriental scent with that spice because your spices are warm, so they fall under that gourmand family. All right, so, so far, you have daytime where you can combine as many fragrance families as you want. I would keep it at a minimum to two to three, because when you start mixing scents together, you don't know how they're gonna smell to someone else. All right, so keep that in mind, and thank you for the puff heart, I appreciate it. All right. So when you keep that in mind when you're creating your fragrance, there's something that you need to do if you are doing this at home. 
We talk about this each and every episode, so today is not going to be any different. You want to make sure that you have moisturized your skin for a multi- for multiple reasons. When you moisturize, whether it's with oil, whether it's with lotion, whether it's with your favorite body butter, you want to make sure that you moisturize because you are putting a layer between your skin and the perfume. You know how you spray something on and you instantly get a reaction? That will help with some of that because there's a layer there that absorbs the perfume, cologne, or the actual fragrance. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. When you are a professional, you're doing this, keep your end user or your customer in mind when you're doing that. What I strongly recommend as a candle maker, number one, try it on yourself to see how you like it because everybody's skin is different. Your pH is different for everybody. It's going to smell different on different people. If you make a blend, for example, that is caramel, marshmallow, and patchouli, three different people might smell three different things. I might smell the caramel, Rob may smell the patchouli, and Courtney may smell the caramel. So it just depends on your blend and how strong and intense you're making your blend. Can I take three things from the same fragrance family and make a blend? Think about it. Doesn't matter, right? Yes, you, you're creating this so you can make it as complex as you want or as simple as you want. It's however you want it to be. How deep do you want to go into this? All right. I would strongly suggest that if you are new to the fragrance world, period, on episode number four, we talked about fragrance terms that you need to know about. Siage is a good one. Siage means what does it smell like when you walk by? And I and the tip that I gave you is to spray it on the back of your shoulders and in your hair. Because everybody wants good siage or that walk by scent, right? You want it to smell amazing. And so you get the compliments of what, what are you wearing? What is that? Even for the guys, same thing. You want to spray it on your pulse points, but you do not want to rub. So I'll show you an example because I actually remembered to bring some perfume. So this is one of my favorites. I love anything that is Carolina Herrera. And hopefully you'll see, you can see this with the background on. I know it's kind of hard. When you spray a perfume on, you want to spray it on your, your pulse points. So notice that I'm spraying it on each one of my wrists. I'm not rubbing it together, right? I'm not rubbing like this. Don't rub, and the reason being is that you rub off your top notes. You rub them off. So what you want to do, if you have to do that, and you're going to have to retrain your brain to do this, you want to pat, right? You want to pat gently. And then, of course, spray behind your ears. On your pulse points, you want to spray behind your knees. And definitely for the ladies, spray it on your ankles, especially if it's date night. You'll thank me later for that. I am not responsible for anything that happens with behind the ankles, right? All right. So the next thing you want to do if you're layering and you're just doing perfume only, you're done, really. But what you want to do if you're doing a true layer, your first layer is moisturizing, right? We just talked about that. Whether you're using oil, lotion, doesn't matter. Your first layer is going to be moisturizing. This is the same way you should explain this to your customers if you are a professional maker. The next layer before you get to your perfume or cologne would be a body or hair mist. And let me turn off this background so you all can actually see. And this podcast is not sponsored. I just bought... Uh, I just had them here because I was making videos so that you all can understand what I'm talking about. Bear with me for one quick second. All right, so we talked about the first layer being oil, lotion, or you can do, some, a lot of people do a uh, lotion first, then they do an oil to really lock in that scent, right? So that's the first thing you could do. Then the second thing would be your uh, lotion, and then you can go in with the body mist, right? 
So what I recommend with the body mist is just spray it lightly because you want it to dry. So you do your lotion, then your body mist, right? And this just happens to be heavy cream by Fleur. I bought this because this is one of the combos I'm going to talk about tonight. So I did it backwards because I just did two demos for you. On the dry down, you'll be able to smell. All right, so this one, this heavy cream is a gourmand because I told you I'm a gourmand girly. And they're actually sold out of this. I happened to grab it, but you can check in Sephora or uh, Ulta if you really like this. It's It smells like um, it's a cream base, but it's like a sweet marshmallow. I really like it. All right, so I just, I let that dry. The next thing you want to do, if you, so I did my lotion, I did my body mist, if you're using that, right? Then I'm going to take my, am I going to do my strongest perfume or my lightest perfume first? Let me see in the chat, what do you think? We talked about our notes, so I'll give you a hint. Are, am I going to spray my strongest perfume first or my lightest? If I'm doing a layering blend, doesn't matter whether it's perfume or cologne for my guys that are out there. All right, so I did my my oil, which can be scented or unscented, but keep that in mind because that contributes to your final scent as well. I did my body mist for body oil. That could be a scent. So if you're doing vanilla, for example, do everything vanilla. You can do just different types of vanilla. But what I'm going to do, that's a good one, Rob. You can do your strongest one. Yep, yep. Some people do it that way. I actually do mine backwards. And why? Because on my sillage, I want my strongest one, which in this case is going to be Burberry Goddess. I want that to be the final because that's what I really want you to smell when I walk by. So I did the Carolina Herrera first, and I'll do it again for this demo because I'm doing a two, a two perfume blend. So I'm doing Carolina Herrera blush, and then I'm doing Burberry Goddess, all right? So of the two, Burberry is the stronger, and also make sure that you let your layers dry in between so rob because you are a guy you're gonna kind of it doesn't matter you're gonna balance yours out because you like clean woodsy so for you you are correct as a man you would do the opposite but for most women they want you to smell them when they walk by or what you could do is you could do the light in your hair because that's a trick for sillage as well. You could do the light in your hair if you don't want it to be that strong and do the strong on your shoulder as you walk by, right? Your shoulder blades or on your shoulders. Also, if you are allergic to fragrance being on your skin, of course, put it on your clothes. It'll last longer as well. So those are all different tricks that you could do. So for the this is for the ladies. So Rob, you are correct for the men. You do your strongest first and then the lighter one because ultimately they're going to blend, right? And you're going to end up smelling them both. For the ladies, this is just what I recommend and what works for me. I do it backwards. I do the lighter one in my hair and I spray the lightest note first or my top note because that's going to burn off first, right? And I put... If I'm just doing two perfumes, then I put the strongest one on last because that's what I want you to smell when I walk by. And I also, for me, because I'm extra and I like beast mode stuff, I put the strongest one in my hair. Especially if you have oil in your hair, it will bond to that oil. So make sure whatever fragrance you're spraying in your hair that you like it a lot because that's what you're going to smell most of the time because our hair is also what? It's warm, right? Our scalp is warm, so it's going to constantly be heating up that scent. All right, when I went to um, TikTok function, uh, I guess it's been two weeks ago now, everybody kept asking me what did I have on, 
And I had on Libre Intense, Burberry Goddess, and Libre. YSL Libre. I had YSL Libre, excuse me, YSL Libre Intense, Mansira Instant Crush, and Burberry Goddess. But what I had done was the oil that I had in my hair, I sprayed the body mist in my hair first. Then I went in with the Burberry Goddess because that's what I wanted them to smell. And then as far as layering, I layered with, um, I used body glaze that day of vanilla, vanilla Air, I think it was. And then I went in with the body oil a vanilla body oil, and then I layered my perfumes on top of that. It lasts all day for hours. It was beast mode for hours because I could still smell it myself. And everybody that I walked by said, you smell good. If you really want to get creative, you can spray different perfumes or colognes on each side to see which one. If you're doing an A-B test, I know a lot of people do that to see which one they get the most compliments on. You could do that as well. So you have options there. So when you are layering fragrances, let me jump back over to the professional side for a second. Whatever you want to be your strongest fragrance, that's what you're going to use the most of. Because your top notes will burn off. Your heart note will blend into your final. All right, and we're gonna do some blending recipes here at the end, all right, if you are a professional. And we're gonna talk about perfume blends also. So let's talk about, again, floral, fruity, woody, spicy, and gourmand. So I added fruity in there, right? Can I have a spicy fruit? Can I have a soft fruit? Or can I have a beast mode fruit? And if you remember, if you've been following along, what episode did we talk about our fruits? Strawberries. A lot of people do rose because rose does really well. But can I have a fruity rose? Can I have a spicy rose? Or can I have a woodsy rose? And yes, Courtney said all of the above, and she's absolutely correct. All right, so just think about that when you are blending scents. Here, here's, here's the thing on the professional side, and a lot of people tend to get away from this. If you forget, as a professional, you're going to make something that you can't stand but other people love. I can't stand gardenia. I can't stand it. But I do like a dirty gardenia. What do I mean by that? I will add... Something else in with this, such as a patchouli, a sandalwood, right, in the gardenia, and then I like it. I don't like straight gardenia, but when I was making candles, my customers love it. It reminds me of my grandmother. Not that I don't love my Nana, but I don't like gardenia, but my customers loved it. Lily of the Valley and gardenia, lavender and gardenia is like, oh, but they loved it, so I had to make it. So when you are a professional, just keep that in mind that you're going to have some scents that you can't stand that your customers love. If you are blending fragrances for yourself or if you're a body oil maker, keep that in mind as well. You're going to have some scents that you wear that you're like, why did I make that? Or if you're just wearing fragrance for yourself, you won't wear that blend again because you didn't like how it smelled. So remember, fragrance is subjective. Some people are going to like it, some are not. Most of us don't care. We're going to wear what we like. We're going to make what we like, right? All right, so the next thing, let's talk about some quick tips and tricks. And we actually got started late today, so we're going to go uh, a little past uh, the hour because we had some technical difficulties. So let's talk about, let me check check my notes here how long is it going to take you to master being a professional fragrance blender how long do you think welcome to the live how long do you think that that typically typically takes most people to be really good 
And there is a name, if you saw my last episode, that there is a name and a title for a professional fragrance blender. And it takes years to get to that point. I am blessed to have a two, three as my moderators. They all have the professional nose. It's called the nose. All right, so that's under our fragrance terms. They are professional blenders. And two of my mods actually do this on a professional level. All right, so just have patience with yourself. It's trial and error, which is why I strongly suggest that you get samples and try them out. If you are a professional, get a user group. Have group A test this blend. Have group B test this blend and see which one they like better. All right, that's another suggestion you could do before you go and invest all this money in fragrances. So let's talk about if you are using fragrances at home. Let me look through my notes here because I wanted to make sure that I talked about this. What are some of the oils that are good for your skin? If you could drop those in the chat for me. What are some of the oils that you want to use on your skin? And you see a lot of them in uh, the body oils now because body oils are really popular right now. Body oils, body butters. I'm thinking of three right off the top of my head. What's the three that most people use, like 90, 95% of the makers use? What's the three oils? I'll give you a second to drop it in the chat. Sometimes I get tired of seeing them because there are other oils out there that are more beneficial. But the top three are coconut oil, sunflower oil, jojoba oil. Yep, there you go, Rob. I knew somebody was going to say it. And there's one more that I'm looking for. One more. Yes, yep, MCT is another one. But how about, without giving out your personal blends, how about rice oil, grapeseed oil, almond oil? And again, you have to make sure that you list your ingredients with whatever you're using. Why? Because people have allergies to different things, especially if you get into almond oil because it is uh, derived from a nut. So keep that in mind. Can I blend those together? I feel like I'm missing another one. I feel like I'm missing one. Let's see, sunflower, rice, jojoba, coconut. Oh, some people use uh, mango, mango oil. Your, your fruit oils, they're really getting into those. And I did say grapeseed, right? All right, so when you are doing, let's talk basic blending. And then we'll talk blending as an art form. Basic blending. You want to make sure that you use complementary notes, which we just talked about. How about a fruity floral for the guys, a citrus woodsy scent or an ocean oceanic woodsy scent of course you have your classics savage right creed ladies i'm gonna go um niche here with the bond number nine that whole lineup right and how many of you know about the different different types of fragrances if you are listening about perfumes you have your budget-friendly fragrances, which are $50 and under, and there is a growing Arabic perfume industry. It's always been around, but people are really getting into that. Rob, Bond Number 9 is coming back because they have a whole new series, and there's a lot of the D word that I can't say on TikTok that's out there now that has caused a resurgence of that inspired by that line so check that out 
All right. So you want to, I keep it simple. If you're just beginning with your two scents or two, two fragrance families, rather. Can I do a gourmand floral? Is that possible? And yes, it would be, I'm going to answer that real quick. It would be like a spicy rose because that one was kind of hard because gourmand, you think fruit, excuse me, food, but you can do a dirty or what's called a spicy rose or dirty rose. A lot of people do that. You can also do a woodsy rose or woodsy floral. So there's endless possibilities. And then we have a whole area that is more of your essential oils, which we will have a future episode on just essential oil blending, which is just basically using your essential oils. All right, and we'll talk about that more with the essential oils because a lot of your essential oil blends you see in spas, right, or in spa-based products. All right, so let's keep going. What about if you blend as an art form? Like I told you, most of my mods are blenders on a professional level. Some of the stuff they come up with just blows my mind away. We're not going to do it tonight. Uh, we're going to do it next month. Uh, a lot of times I'll just ask them to throw recipes in the chat and they do it so fast. They throw them off the top of their head because that's how much they're into blending. I give them a topic and they just go. So we're going to um, talk about some blends tonight here in just a few minutes, but we're still talking about the basics. So start small. Again, use your samples. And then once you see what you like, what your customers like, then go out and find your favorite suppliers. And we got big things coming because I have an extensive blend list, but I'm going to put it behind a paywall. So uh, if you don't follow me, go ahead and give me a follow so you'll be able to see when that is announced. And it is an extensive list. It's over 400 blends and growing. All right, so make sure you keep an eye out on my channel and page for that and the podcast. And for a shameless plug, we are also over on YouTube as well. If you want to catch me on YouTube, it's Bubbles and Flames podcast. So start out small and then grow bigger. And then blending is a lot of fun because you can increase the smell or decrease the smell based upon what end result you're trying to go for. What do I mean by that? A fall or winter blend is not going to be, that's going to be a lot heavier versus a summer blend. Summer especially spring blends are very light because they're very fun. They're very vibrant. So you'll have a lot of fruits in uh, spring and summer blends versus fall. We get into more of our woodsy blends, right? Like I think uh, earlier today, I was talking with Rob about fireside. I think that's what we said, Rob. Fireside, cedarwood, patchouli, leather, vetiver, you get into your spices, but can I throw a floral in there? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So those, you get into your more complex blends. So experiment with small batches. Create a step-by-step -step or make notes of your blends so that you know what you like, what you don't like to include your percentages. Include your percentages. And the, the scent that you want to be your base note, that's what you're going to use the most, right? So keep that in mind for any blends that we talk about. All right. Also, keep in mind what time of year is this that you're making this blend for? That you're making this blend for. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about some blends. And I'm going to give you a second to grab your pen and paper. And let me open up my notes. And the first one that I'm going to talk about, the keynote is going to be raspberry. All right, so grab your pen and paper, or you can always go back and watch the replay. 
I'm going to give you blends. I am not going to give you percentages. I'm just going to give you the blends. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. If you are ready, these are fragrance blends that pertain to raspberry. And you know what? Let me do this first. I'm going to reverse it. Let me give you some scent of the week. Let me give you some scents of the week for those of you that are here for perfumes that I did this week. And then that way, if you decide to cut out, you can. But I mentioned this earlier, but now I'm going to show you the full thing of what I did. So these two are really popular right now. So heavy cream and caramel skin. So I did these two together. I did the caramel one first. Then I did, I let it dry. So of course I moisturized first. I did the caramel skin first. Then I did the heavy cream. And then the perfume that I put on top of it, I did the Sabrina Carter Sweet Tooth. So I did all of these together. So I moisturized first with the vanilla, of course, because I love vanilla. Then I did this one. I did this one, and then I went behind and sprayed this one. All right, this I wear gourmand year round, so in the summertime, if I'm not really going anywhere, I'll put a body mist on every day. All right, so I still get the satisfaction of me having on a fragrance, but I don't use up my perfume just for walking around the house. But I will spray perfume just to walk around the house and also to go to sleep. The oil that I use, and I absolutely love this oil. This is from my girl Nakia over at Sensational. This is called Top Carnival, which is inspired by Cirque de Soleil. So that is considered a designer perfume. But what I do is I cheat. I have the oil, and this is four ounces. I also made a body mist out of this. So this is what I use for my oil to moisturize after my body butter and I used this as my body mist and then I went in with the heavy cream and the caramel skin because body mists tend to burn off they're like top notes they tend to burn off quick so uh, as a little hack I'll just use the oil and the body mist of the same type the second one which is what I showed you all earlier I did Carolina Herrera blush and I did the Burberry Goddess, all right, with the heavy cream. So those are the, the uh, scent of the days that I did this week. And I also did Burberry Goddess and heavy cream just to see what it smells like. And that one smells really good as well. That's what I've done so far this week. It's only Wednesday. So that's what I've done so far this week. And like I said, my base has been um the top carnival and she has a bunch of these i'm trying to convince uh nakia 